So, um, so in science, in a scientific community, if you do, are doing research on something, like if you are a true scientist doing research on it, and you're going to publish it into a scientific journal, uh, that uh, you had better make sure it's reliable, done some analysis on it, and I'm going to tell you how to do that, um, some of the things to do that, so that it is um, not rejected by the larger scientific community. So if somebody were to publish something and it not be reliable data, or um, then they would be eaten alive by their colleagues, all right, because, um, uh, and so therefore you need to be able to do that and analyze the data properly. So <clears throat> four things, and the two first two are pretty easy. You already know the mean or average um, sample size and then standard deviation and standard error are the two major things that we're going to talk about here today. So mean, well, you guys know how to calculate the average or the mean. So you take up all your data points, you add them together and divide by the number of data points you have. And so you did that yesterday uh, with each of the types of solution in the lab. So for distilled water, you added up everybody's percent change got a big number divided by the total number of groups you had, which was eight, and got a uh, mean for the, for the percent change in distilled water. Um, so that's how you do that. I just want to point out here that um, on the AP test, they put an equation for figuring out the mean. This is what it looks like, all right? It's very scary looking <laughs> um, uh, when figuring out the mean. That just means what I just talked about, adding up the, all right, and so on. So I don't want, I just wanted to point that out here that it's the same thing as what you can do, all right? So the mean, we're not gonna set up and add up all these 130 numbers, so I did it for you. So I added all these um, body temperatures up, divided by the total, which was 130 people, and this, this mean of this group was 98.25 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, what is the average mean for the human population in general? Did you, you guys, do you guys know that? 98.6, you've probably heard that number before. It's the average human internal body temperature. So you can see that this is not quite, this group doesn't quite meet that 98.6 um, average. And so we're gonna talk about what that means as well. So that's your mean of the sample. Sample size is just basically the number of individuals you have in your data um, collection. And so in this case here, it's 130 people. All right, so the sample size. Sample size is represented by the letter N here. So whenever you see N, that is the sample size, and that varies So um, from data set to data set. So ours is 130. Uh, so now let's look at the new stuff. So standard deviation. So what standard deviation is, it says it's a tool for measuring the spread or variance in the sample population. So let me give an analogy of this um, with something you're familiar with. So let's say a teacher is going to figure out the mean on a test. All right, so what's the average score on the test? So we're going to take everybody's score, add them up, divide by the number of kids in the class, and we get a mean. So let's say the mean is 75%, all right? So if you have a mean of 75%, do you see that we're in, uh, uh, that gives you one piece of information, but what can give you another piece of information is how far away from the mean people were. So for instance, at a mean of 75%, you could have the whole class somewhere between 70 and 80% on the test, do somewhere in between 70 and 80%, and you have a mean of 75. Or you could literally have half the people fail and half the people get A's and still get a mean of 75%. And so therefore the mean tells us one thing, but the spread around that mean, is there is it all over the place, all right? The spread around that mean is another piece of information. So, so I, um, as a teacher, I'd be concerned if, you know, half the class got 30% and half the class got, you know, 100% or something like that, okay? So, <coughs> so therefore, um, when we're looking at standard deviation, a large standard deviation is one that has a lot of variability. So that would be the example where the 75% and you have people all over the place, very few people probably even at 75% and then everybody else um, uh, below or above. And a small standard deviation is the people are closer and clustered around that mean. All right, and so <coughs> there's an equation to figure out standard deviation. It looks like this. And I'll talk about this in just a little bit here. Um, it says in red, it says you do not have to calculate this on the AP bio exam, um, but you should understand how it's derived and how it's used. So therefore, um, this equation will be given to you on the AP bio exam, um, but like I said, you won't have to do the, the calculations. 
to understand the true what, what this means though, we're going to do a little bit of calculations to understand how it's used and so on. Uh, <coughs> so what this um, uh, equation is, this big fancy thing here right here. Anybody know what that means? That's right. All right, I mean, to sum up. And so, so you have an individual data point. So let's say you have eight data points. You take your individual data point minus the mean. X with the line over it means mean. You square it and add this up for every single data point you have. And then divide it by n, which is the number in your sample, minus 1, and then take the square root of the whole thing. By the end of this, you'll understand and be able to utilize this. All right, but like I said, you don't, it's not something you have to memorize. Uh, but we have to understand what it means. So here are two examples of data that have a large and a small standard deviation. So you can see here um, the data points are all over the place. That would be an example of a large standard deviation of this is a little, uh, the mean there. And this is a small standard deviation where the points are clustered um, around the mean. So all of our data is clustered around the mean. So um, for this, for simplistic sake, um, I calculate this, calculated the standard deviation for this sample at 0.73 degrees Fahrenheit. So for right now, just take my word that that's the um, uh, uh, standard deviation um, <coughs> around uh, for that particular sample. What does that mean? Does 0.73 degrees Fahrenheit as a standard deviation? So one standard deviation from the mean in either direction, either below the mean or above the mean, um, represents 68% of your data. So that means that <laughs> if this is your mean here, so, so uh, in that sample size, the mean was 98.25, it's not very dark for, for video to see, 98.25, it was below the normal population. And so one standard de deviation away from that, what that means is, oops, I went the wrong way. Our standard deviation of 0.73, what this negative uh, one uh, standard deviation away from the mean means, it's 98.25 minus one standard deviation, which was 0.73. And this is 98.25 plus 0.73. And so what we're saying here is out of that sample, 68% of the individuals are going to be within one standard deviation away from the mean. All right, so that represents 68% of the people. Then we go over here to the next line, both ways. You go over yet another standard deviation, so another 7.3 in both directions. Um, that's called two standard deviations, right, one, two. And that encompasses 95% of the people all right, and then three standard deviations, about 99% uh, of the people. And so that's what that means. And so um, what I want to do is show you, I have a little video here um, to show you. This is Bozeman video. And also I want to plug, um, is this a, for a study tool. This is um, a man named Paul Anderson. He, uh, he has a um, bunch of videos. And he calls him Bozeman Biology. He taught AP Biology for years. He stopped teaching AP Biology and full-time started making videos on different topics to help students in AP Biology. So, um, so he has videos on all different kinds of topics. So you might want to jot that down. You can t Google Bozeman Biology, Paul Anderson, and it'll come right up. And there's a whole category list of things that he gives, does videos on. Um, sometimes it's helpful to see it, somebody else explain it in a different way. Um, it can help you to understand it. So that's a resource for you. Um, he has a video on standard deviation that I'm going to play. Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this video I'm going to talk about standard deviation. When you're collecting data in a science lab, the amount of data you collect is important. So is the average, but another important statistic is going to be the standard deviation of your sample. And so in this video I'm going to show you what it is conceptually. I'm then going to show you how to calculate standard deviation by hand, and then finally I'm going to show you how to calculate the spreadsheet. So 
first of all, what is it? Well, to understand standard deviation, you have to understand the normal distribution. And so what does that mean? Well, you're, it's a bell-shaped curve. You might think of it like that. And so in the United States, most men are about 5 foot 9. In other words, that's the average right here. That's the mean, or in statistics, that's the x bar. Um, but there's going to be a lot of men who obviously are taller than that, and a lot who are shorter than that. And so the standard deviation is going to measure the spread or the variation in this bell-shaped curve. And so basically, if we were to go right over here, this dark area is going to be one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below the mean, or it's going to be below the average. And there's something cool about that. About 68% of the individuals are going to be in this area. So one standard deviation above and below. But if we were to look at this, for example, down here is two standard deviations. And so 95% of individuals are going to be within two standard deviations from that. And then finally, if we go way down here, 99% of individuals are going to be um, within three standard deviations of the mean. But the standard deviation is going to vary depending on the data that you collect. And so if we had two curves like this, so this is one curve, and then we had another curve that looked like this, That data plotted on, plotted on the same curve, this one is going to have a smaller standard deviation than this one. They're both going to have standard deviations, obviously. They're going to have amounts where it's 68, 95, and 99% of the people. But this one down here, since it's more spread out, is going to have a higher <coughs> standard deviation. And so how do we calculate that? Well, the equ equation is a little scary. Um, the scary part, it ends up being right here. So students are a little scared by that, the summation symbol. Um, but it's actually pretty straightforward. It's not that hard to calculate the standard deviation. And so let me show you how to do that. And so first thing you want to do is you want to have a data set. So here's going to be our data set right here. And to make this easy, let's say we just have four pieces of data. One, two, three, four, and five. So you're collecting data, and this is the data in your data table. And you want to figure out the standard deviation of that. Well, to set that up, we're basically going to take the square root of the summation of this divided by the degrees of freedom. So that sounds a little bit scary. So let's go to the scariest part to begin with. So let's look at what's going on right here underneath that square root. And so what this is, so if we go like this, the summation of x minus x bar squared basically means for each of these data points that I have, we're going to have to figure out what's right here. So x minus x bar. And so the first thing we have to do is figure out what the average is. We have to figure out what x bar is. Well, basically, if I add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 together, I get 15. And if I divide by that by n, which is the total number of data points, so in this case, n equals 5. So we have 5 data points over here. So if I divide 15 by 5, hopefully you can figure out an average. The average is going to be 3. And so the mean is 3, or the average is 3. So what we have to do is we have to calculate this value for all five of these data points. What does that mean? Well, right here, we're going to use x, and x for the first case is going to be 1. So that's going to be 1 minus 3, and then we're going to square that. So what is that? 1 minus 3, and we square that, is going to be negative 2. And if we square that, so that's negative 2 squared. And if we square that, that's 4. Let's go to the next one. Well, this is 2 minus 3, so that stays the same. So that's negative 1 squared. So that's going to be negative 1 squared, or that's going to equal 1. If we go to the next one, that's easy. That 3 minus 3 squared equals 0. And if we square 0, that's going to be 0. If we go to the next one, that's going to be 4 minus 3. So that, that's going to be 1 squared equals 1. And then finally, if we go 5 minus 3 squared, that's going to be 2 squared. And so if you ever see this summation sign, don't be scared by that. It's not scary at all. It just means you've got to do a lot of work. So for each of these data points, 1 through 5, I have to calculate what was in there. And then I have to add it all up. So I have to add 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4. And if I add all those up, I get 10. And so what's going to be inside there? It's simply going to be 10. So let's figure out the rest of my standard deviation. Standard deviation is going to be the square root. In this case, we solve this as equal to 10. And then we're going to divide that by n minus 1. So what's n? That's our sample size. In this case, it's 5. And so we take n minus 1, and that's going to equal 4. 
And so what is our standard deviation? It's the square root of 10 divided by 4, which is 2.5. Or if we take the standard deviation of uh, the, the square root of 2.5, that's going to be something like 1.58. Um, and so you're going to have to use a calculator to do that. Well, what does that mean? If we were to plot this data as a histogram, for example, this would be our standard deviation, 1.58. And so it takes a while, time, a while to figure that out based on um, doing it by hand. And so if you want to, Give it a try. So here's data set over here. And so try to calculate the standard deviation using this data set over here. Try to. All right, that's what I need to do. So on the sketch paper or yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
mean, right? So this is what's called the standard error of mean. Sometimes, I'm going to write this here, sometimes it'll be like this, SEM, standard error of mean. So therefore, either way you see that, it's the same thing. And so what you do is you take your standard deviation, that's S, and you divide it by the square root of whatever your sample size was. So in the example we just did for the, those five numbers, 0, 2, whatever it was, I can't remember all of them, um, you, we figured out the standard deviation was 2.7, so it would be 2.7 divided by the square root of n, which in that case was 5. All right, and so what the standard error does, it means that <coughs> um, we look at um, actually two standard error units, and it's called a 95% confidence interval, meaning that um, whatever number your standard error comes out to be, if you took a random sampling of the population, um, that it should pr produce a mean that falls within two standard error units, either plus or minus, 95% of the time. So, um, so therefore, your data should 95% of the time, the mean should be in between the two, two standard error units. So what does this mean? Let's go through an example here um, to give you an idea. And again, you don't have to calculate this on the AP Bio exam. They do give you this uh, equation here, but we have to understand kind of what it means. And so I'm going to give you some examples here. And so, <coughs> so standard error, how well the mean of a sample estimates the true mean of a population. And two things that we're really looking at here, measure of accuracy, if you know the true mean, uh, and measure of precision, precision if the mean maybe is not known, the true mean of the whole population. What's the difference between accuracy and pre precision? So how close accuracy, how close the measured value is to the actual true value, and how precision is how close the measured values are to each other. So you can have values that are really close together, but not close to the overall mean, or, but, um, or you can have both of them. So this gives you an analogy with hitting a bullseye. So this shows you the person shooting these arrows here. Um, does not have very good accuracy because they're nowhere near the bullseye, all right? But they have really good precision. They're very, they, they're um, hitting within the same area here, if only that was the bullseye, all right? So then on the middle one, uh, this is um, better or higher accuracy around the bullseye, but not very good precision because they're kind of spread all over the place, and this would be the ideal situation with both of those, all right? So high accuracy and precision where your numbers are, or data are close together and close to the mean. So, so figuring this out here, the standard error for this body temperature population is 0 0.06 degrees Fahrenheit. So how, what I did to do that is going back here to the equation here, I took the standard deviation of the population, which was 0 0.73, I think, divided by the square root of n, which was um, 130, and get got this number. All right, so that's been calculated for you. So, <coughs> so what does this mean in terms of analyzing this data? So what do we know for the, for the people in their temperatures, that 130 people? We know the sample mean is 98.25. We just figured out the standard error, which is 0 0.06. So therefore, um, uh, we, the sample mean plus, two or, plus or minus two standard error units is, is where 95% of the time the data should fall in. And so therefore, that what does that mean? It's 98.25 plus or minus, now notice it says 0 0.12. So we figured out in the previous thing that the standard error is 0 0.06, right? That's the standard error, but it's two standard error units, so we have to multiply that by two. That's why it's plus or minus 0 0.12. So what does that really mean? So 98.25 minus 0 0.12, gives you 98.13, and then 98.25 plus 0.12 gives you 98.37. So therefore, it should fall 95% of the time between these numbers. Now, we said the human mean was 98.6. Does it fall between these two numbers? No, it's, it's even higher than that. So therefore, our, our mean, uh, this does not fall in, in the range of that. So that tells me that it says there, um, because it does not include the accepted population, that there's a uh, significant statistical difference between this mean of this population, these 130 individuals, and 
the human population's meat. All right. So that what does that mean? There could be something else. Could something else be affecting their their temperature? So it's not just natural variation. Absolutely. So maybe there's some have some kind of sickness or something. I don't know. All right. So there could be something that's affecting that. So that that's what this means is that there is some difference uh, uh, statistically between the mean and of this population and the overall population. And so that tells us something. So it tells us something in addition to just what the mean is, and that it's different than the um, larger mean of the the population. So let me give you an, another example of how to use this in comparing data. So I'm going to have you take a minute. You have this in front of you. You can read it up here if you want, but you have it in front of you. I'm going to have you take a minute and read through this example problem. I'm going to show how we can use this in comparing data. these plants, they're ivy, they're the same type of plant, but one's growing in the shade and one's growing in the sun, and so there are, the ones in the shade have a bigger width than the ones in the sun, and so we're going to see if that's significantly, dip, that's a significant difference, all right, is that a big deal or is it just to just some variation um, uh, within the species itself. So, <clears throat> this chart here. I didn't give you the raw data, so I don't have 30 points of how wide each, you know, leaf was, all right? But um, what they, what I'm giving you is the already calculated data. So, so in the shady, the shady leaves, they measured 30 leaves, added the measurements all together, divided by 30, got the mean, all right? Did the same thing for the sunny. Um, then did the standard deviation. There's no way I was going to make you do standard deviation for 30 data points. I mean, you just did it for five. All right, for 30, you'd have to do it for 30 times, add them all together, all right, and so on. So, so, <coughs> so um, this is the standard deviation, so that tells you, remember, the spread around the mean. And then n was 30 for both of these, and then the standard error is the standard deviation um, divided by the square root of n, which is 30, and that's how we got these, all right? So this is our data, pieces of data that we have, and so now what do we do with this? All right, so first of all, we need to calculate, because remember, we want the data to be in plus or minus two standard error units. So this is one standard error, and so therefore we multiplied it by two, and so that's 0.6 and 0.48. So now, <coughs> what do we do with these numbers? All right, so we want, so the, the spread, or the 95% confidence, uh, is, if we look at the shady side here, Shady, the mean was 7.43. We want that uh, the range to be plus or minus 0.6 of that. So 7.43 plus or minus 0.6. So 7.3 minus 0.6 is 6.83. And then plus 0.6 is 8.03. So therefore, that's our range for a 95% confident interval. And then the sunny, the sunny had a different mean. It was 5.88 and a different uh, uh, standard error here. So it's 5.88 plus or minus 0.48. So 5.88 minus 0.48 is uh, uh, 0.54, and plus 0.48 is 6.36. So that's our range. So now what do we do with this? Because we want to compare them and use this data to see if there's a significantly statistic difference between the two. And so what the first thing you're going to do is take your mean and graph it. And we're going to use, and for this particular piece of data, we have 30 leaves here and get the mean, and 30 leaves here and get the mean shady and sunny. We're going to graph the mean. What, can somebody tell me why it is would be more appropriate to use a bar graph in this case versus a line graph? Do you guys know how to tell when you're going to use a bar graph and when you're going to use a line graph in determining how to graph your data, other than your teacher tells you what to do? 
anybody have an idea of how we would determine that? Jace? Okay, okay, so having multiple values. So like you use a line graph when your independent variable is like continuously going. Like yep. time, for example, is always going and then we're measuring something over time. Okay. Uh, the bar graph is more for like, we have a category and there's a set number in this category, so we'll fill it up. That's correct, all right. So, um, so our data, like over um, in the lab, when we did the molarity um, uh, versus uh, the percent change here, how, why, how, based upon what Manny just said, why was it appropriate to use a graph, a uh, line graph there? Why didn't we just make a bunch of bars? Carolyn? Because over time, you No. No, it wasn't over time. <laughs> That was consistent between all of them. So what's true about the data on that x-axis? So you're not going to say it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Were you going to say something? Uh, uh, thinking about it. Okay. <laughs> well, because we have, like, it's almost, just so we can see, like, the, the kind of the rate of change that the, the percent change is going at. It's like, the way we did it with the moles, it was almost like a bar graph, but then we wanted to connect it so we could actually see it. Like, Right. Do you see where the molar concentrations, we had 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and so on. Do you see how they're kind of connected in that there's a trend, like that the lower, you know, the higher the concentration, the less percent change? And so, therefore, the data points in between, it's continuous, called continuous data. It's, so, therefore, it follows the same trend. So, you could do interpolation, which means looking at between two data points and figure out what would be, a, a, you know, an, a, a, a point that you didn't test for, but you could do based upon the graph. This is not continuous data. So this data point and this data point um, are not dependent on each, in, each other in any way. There's no trend there. Does that make sense? And so therefore, we make a bar graph. So when you're making a bar graph here, um, you, we have our two bars where we have the shady and the sunny. We have the means, um, the graph there. The second thing we need to add is this two standard error units, our error bars on our graph. Whoops. And so this is important. I don't know how well you can see it on your uh, sheet, how well it's copied, but this is the important part right here, this bar here and this bar here. What this means is, remember we want the data 95% of the time should fall bet uh, uh, between the mean and plus or minus the two standard error units. So two standard error units, the mean for shady leaves is 7.43, Two standard error units is 0.6. All right, so therefore, this is this is my mean right here at 7.43. So from here to here is plus 0.6. From here to here is minus 0 0.6. 0 0.6. And so therefore, that's my range. And so 95% of the time, um, the mean should fall within that range. All right. And this one here, the mean was 5.88. 
uh, my two standard air units, and this one was 0.48. So here's my 5.88. So here's my plus 5.88 plus 0.48 minus 0.48. And so therefore, 95% of the time in the popu uh, population, it should fall within this range, all right? So, so therefore, every time you take a, 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 a sample from the population, it's not gonna exactly equal the mean, 5.88, but it needs to fall within it, that range to be acceptable. Now, remember the question, the overall question is, are these two pieces of, uh, or two individual groups, the shady and the sunny, are they significantly different statistically from each other? So how you tell that is if there's any overlap between the ranges. Do these ranges overlap at all? Can there ever, in this population, can a mean fall within the mean range of this population? Can that ever happen? According to this, do they overlap? They do not overlap. And so therefore, what that tells me is that there is something else going on, that there is a significant difference between these two means of this population. That means there's something else going on that could cause that. So what could that be? Why could the shady side, shady leaves, the leaves in the shade, we'll have to pick this up tomorrow. All right, say if this 